Hello there guys, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review and I hope that everybody's had a good weekend. We were deprived of them last week, but now they're back. Today I'm going to be talking about Brandon and Julia. But today, just before I begin my video, I want to give a big shout out to Dr. Kelly Waters. And Kelly sent me a lovely message saying, I'm a frontline ER doctor and the last year has been rough, but your videos are a bright spot and my team enjoys watching them. We are all huge 90 Day Fiancé fans and please keep it up and stay safe out there. Guys, I can't believe that Kelly's shouting out to say thank you to me. I think I can say a big thank you on behalf of all of my subscribers to you and your team for your very vital work during the pandemic. So I just want to say much love and a massive, massive thank you for all your work from me. And also, just before I begin, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to follow me on Twitter at eBirdOnline. So without further ado, I give you Brandon and Julia. So this week we first meet up with Brandon and Julia and they're driving along in the car. They pass a hospital and Brandon says, look, medical care within four minutes. And Julia looks a little perplexed and he explains it's a hospital. It's a great medical center. And Julia winds down the window to get a bit of air. And she says, I want to throw up. Oh, Julia, I know how you feel. I want to throw up when I see Brandon as well. And Brandon says, do you think you're pregnant? And Julia said, I think I might be. And Brandon tells producers the method of birth control we've been using is, well, what I think the medical term for it is the pull-out method. Uh, Brandon, that's not a method. That method's about as good as crossing one's fingers. And Brandon said it's worked thus far. Maybe I'm really, really good at it. Brandon, Julia's only been in the US for about four weeks. Her not getting pregnant for four weeks is not long enough for you to suggest proficiency in anything. And Brandon starts to look really worried. It's only been 10 seconds, but it's all becoming too much for him. And Brandon blurts out, I want to tell my mum. And Julia said, why? And he said, well, she works everything out. She'll find out one way or the other. And Julia said, I don't know what happened. And Brandon said, neither do I. And yet another 90 day fiance couple doesn't understand the method of human reproduction. It's a sad indictment on our education system. But guys, Julia's upset. She tells producers, why does Brandon want to tell his mum before we even know anything? Brandon gets on my nerves. He doesn't know how to fix anything. I haven't even bought a test yet, but he wants to tell his parents. Whenever he has a problem, the first thing he wants to do is not to try and fix it, but to let his parents know, yes, Julia, that's Brandon's method of fixing things. He doesn't have to think anything through for himself. He just tells his mum and she fixes it for him. And guys, the eBird thinks Brandon's been taking way too many drugs. One of them's estrogen. And so next time we see this couple, they're both sitting on the bed. And Julia says, I'm really scared. And Brandon said, me too. And Brandon tells production, I've decided to go and talk to my parents about things because my mum notices everything. She's bound to find out. Yes, she will find out, Brandon, because you're telling her. And he says, are you ready, Julia? And she says, no, I'm not. This is a bad idea. And then Julia tells production, I don't know why he wants to tell his mum. When he tells her, she'll want to talk to me about birth control. Well, if you are pregnant, Julia, it will be a tad too late, won't it? And they go out onto the veranda and Betty and Ron are sitting there. And Betty says, do you want to play a game? And Brandon says, uh, absolutely. And yet again, he's answering for both of them. Maybe Julia isn't interested in playing silly games. And so they decide to play Jenga. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's a game of blocks where all the blocks are stacked up and each person has to take a block out. And the person to collapse the whole tower of blocks is the loser. I'd like to say before the game even starts, three of the four people here are already losers. So as they're playing, Brandon says, right, so I've got to push out a block. And Ron says, whichever, whichever one you touch, you got to pull it out. Hmm, I feel like he said that somewhere before. <laughs> oh God, you guys, people were all in my comments last week saying, why are you not talking about the big story that Betty and Ron are swingers? No, I'm not talking about that story. And, for, and there are many very good reasons why I'm not. The first reason is we don't know if it's true. Although I must admit, it's been about two or three weeks since it's been alleged and we've had absolutely no denials from anybody thus far. The second reason is it's not part of the show. The third reason is it's their personal private business. But the fourth and main reason is the mental images that this conjures up are fucking traumatizing. We're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic on a hitherto unrivaled scale since the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. And so the very last thing that I want to do is have a discussion about this. I'm depressed enough as it is already without thinking about those two doing God knows what else with other septuagenarians. But I have to say one thing. I did wonder where Betty and Ron were going that time when 
They disappeared very late in the evening and they came back scarily early in the morning with no details whatsoever as to where they were going or what they'd been doing or in fact who they'd been doing it with although they perhaps don't know themselves. <laughs> I would say the mind boggles but I've blocked it all out and you should too. So Brandon gingerly tells them that Julia was being sick earlier and the young couple thought pregnancy might well be on the cards. Maybe, just maybe, the news of Betty and Ron swinging has met Julia's ears and that's why she's feeling nauseous. So Brandon says Julia might be pregnant. Interesting news, says Ron. And then he asks, have you taken a test? And the couple say no. And then even Ron said, why are they telling us this before getting a pregnancy test? And Betty says, let's confirm it before we all start getting, well, I don't want to say upset, but it's not the best time for you guys to be getting pregnant now, is it? And Ron piped up, I mean, I thought you guys had plans for things you wanted to do. And Brandon said, Dad, please don't start preaching to me. I've already been preaching to Julia. What? What do you mean you've been preaching to Julia? The only thing you've been preaching is, I won't wear a condom. I won't wear a condom. And Ron said, no, 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 it's not her fault. It's both of your faults. And for once, Ron is absolutely correct. Why are you just blaming it all on her? And Julia said, Brandon, why are you blaming just me? And everybody there agreed, it's both of your issue, not just Julia's. And Julia said to producers, I can't believe he says it's only my fault. Julia, I can, because the way I see it, Brandon will deflect and put the blame on anyone or anything else whenever he can. He's known for it. It's his MO. From what I can see, it's what he's best at. And in fact, I go so far as to say it's one of his only talents. And the next time we see them, Brandon comes in with a pregnancy test in hand. Julia takes it and says to Brandon, I'm very scared. And then she does what I think is quite a strange thing. Most people just wheeze straight onto the test stick, but not Julia. She wheezes into a cup, puts the cup on the side in the bathroom, and then calls Brandon in so they can look at the test together. She dips it into the wee, and Brandon puts a three minute timer on his phone. And they wait for the test to do its work. After three minutes, Julia looks at it and she says, oh my God, there's two lines. What does that mean? And Brandon said, oh my God, it's positive. Really? It's positive. And then Julia bursts into laughter. And of course, it's not positive at all. And they're both relieved and very happy. And then Julia starts moaning on again and saying she wishes that they didn't tell Betty and Ron. And Julia said, Brandon, your mum's now going to say we should go to the doctor. She's going to go on and on. And Brandon says, well, I think you actually should go to the doctor now. What you, again, with this you, birth control is not just the woman's responsibility. And Julia reasserts again that she doesn't want to drink medicines. And Brandon reasserts again, he doesn't like condoms. And then he says, she doesn't like them either. It's not the fact of if you like condoms or not. Many people probably don't like them, but they like them a little bit more than they do random babies when they're not married and they have no money and they're living in places that they don't want to be living. Then condoms are a great thing. And so they go into the living room and a nervous Betty and Ron are sitting waiting for the news. And Brandon and Julia roll the very same trick on his parents. And Betty and Ron sit there for a while saying, come on, tell us, are you pregnant or are you not? Tell us. And once they finally admit that they're not pregnant, everybody is relieved, all four of them. They're mightily, mightily relieved. And when Brandon and Julia together talk to producers, Julia says, I'm so glad I'm not pregnant. And Brandon said, pregnant? And Julia says, yeah, pregnant. Isn't it pregnant? And Brandon started laughing and said, words with Julia. <laughs> Brandon, give us your Russian words. Nyat, I thought not. And I'm reliably informed that Julia not only speaks fluent Russian, fairly fluent English, but she's also fluent in Korean. Brandon, when you have three languages under your hat, then you can take the pee. And that's where we leave this couple for this week. So what does the eBird make from all of this? Well, I didn't think they were pregnant for some reason. I think if they seriously thought they were pregnant, Julia would have just done a pregnancy test immediately. But what's interesting is they're not using any proper form of protection and it's very clear that they can't afford a child. And if Julia were to be pregnant, they wouldn't have the wedding that they wanted or the life they wanted. And my advice to these kids is, you better come up with a better method than the pull-out method if you don't want to be stuck on that farm for the rest of your natural life without the possibility of parole. And Brandon thinks all of this responsibility is Julia's and Julia's alone. Brandon, wake up and smell the coffee because anything which affects you is partially your responsibility if you have any weight at all to change the outcome of what may happen, which you do. But the main thing that really stood out to me this week is that Julia needs to stop completely blaming Brandon for everything. 
Yes, Brandon's a pussy, and on that, we can all agree. Brandon can't think for himself, and he needs his mum to help him with his every decision and every dilemma. However, Julia, when you believe something, you need to stick to it. So as soon as Brandon said, I want to tell my mum, you should have said absolutely no way. Brandon and Julia, you're driving along in one of your many, many cars. Julia, all you needed to do is to say, Brandon, turn around, go back to town, let's get a pregnancy test, let me do the test, and then we tell your parents if it turns out that we're pregnant. Brandon is always going to overshare with Betty and Ron and if you want to stop it you need to actually say to him no I actually forbid you this is me and my body that we're talking about this is a situation which is between you and I and I don't want anybody else in it until we know what that situation is. I understand what she said before it's his parents so if it were my parents I would tell them but I expect him to tell his parents Julia he's not doing it so you need to show him the way. And I know lots of you guys think Brandon will never grow up and Julia's with a man-child and I think to some extent she is. But obviously it's her man-child and she loves that man-child so the only thing she can do if she's going to stay in the relationship is to start working away at this and actually putting plans in place to break down his dependence on his parent. But for what it's worth I think this couple is a very cute couple and it seems to me that Julia loves him so much she forgives all his little foibles. And Brandon loves Julia so much that he spent thousands and thousands of pounds getting her over here from Russia. So when people say this couple aren't right for each other and Brandon's too childish, that would mean that Brandon's not right for anybody ever. And therefore Brandon just stays single for the whole of his life. But all of us is perfect and we're all socialized differently by different people. I understand he has got a few things to work through, but I think it's nice of Julia to sit and work through these things with him and we shouldn't just write people off. And I do believe that we shouldn't just write people off because there's one thing which is wrong with them. Guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Julia is right to stick it out, to try and help Brandon and to try and make him more of a man? Do you think it's a lost cause and she should write him off? Also, what do you think about Julia's responsibility, making sure Brandon doesn't just run riot and tell Betty and Ron everything and include Betty and Ron in on every single action that they do? Julia's 26, she's her own woman, I think she should put her foot down just a little bit more. Guys, let me know what you think in comments down below and I'll be back very soon with another video. Before you go, please don't forget to press that big red subscribe button. Come on guys, join our little gang. It's fun over here. Please follow me on Twitter at eBird Online. Thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.